Hi there, welcome to my channel. Um, my name is David. Today we're going to be talking about elevator music, or at least the music that pops into your head when you're thinking about elevators. Maybe you're on hold, hotel lobbies, or casinos. You've definitely heard this kind of music before. It's the quintessential cheesy waiting for something music. Now I'm pretty sure that the music you're hearing in your head when I'm talking about these things is a genre called bossa nova. And bossa nova is actually one of my favorite genres. And I think if we clear up a few things, it could be a genre that you really get a lot of enjoyment out of as well. So stick around and find out why bossa nova deserves to be in your listening rotation, how to listen to it, what you're listening for, and how I believe it can honestly enrich your life. And if you hang around to the end, I'll give you some great recommendations, some good genre entry points, as well as some deeper cuts for those who really love genres like I do. And with that, let's get into it. So in order to understand the elevator music that we know and loathe today, we need a bit of quick context. Where did this genre come from? What is bossa nova anyway? Let's go back to Brazil in the late 1950s. At this time, Brazil was experiencing an all too brief period of political optimism, a precarious island of semi-stability sandwiched between military dictatorships. This spirit of positivity carried with it a renewed feeling of national pride. There was a new capital being constructed in Brasilia, and arts and literature were flourishing. It was in this climate that Bossa Nova would emerge, a Brazilian art form for a new modern age and a new generation as well. Bossa Nova first morphed onto the scene when educated upper middle class students and a few local musicians in Rio started to blend American jazz and post-war crooning with traditional samba rhythms. This new sound also combined with a shift in Brazilian literature and poetry from the political to the intimate and real, something that would become a defining aspect of Bossa Nova's lyrical style. So lyrically, Bossa Nova can get a little cerebral, a little philosophical at times, but it usually stays grounded in everyday experience. Take a look at this selection from Tom Jobim's Aguas de Marzo, here adapted as the English version, Waters of March. A stick, a stone, it's the end of the road, it's the rest of a stump, it's a little alone. It's a sliver of glass, it's life, it's the sun, it is night, it is death, it's a trap, it's a gun. The oak when it blooms, a fox in the brush, not in the wood, the song of a thrush. I love this song. It's a song about observation. It's a meditation on kind of how the mundane and the profound both are really important parts of the human experience. And when painted over Bossa Nova's distinctive rhythm, the result is beautiful. So this is where we come to, and please forgive me for this, the elevator in the room. You're probably thinking that this isn't the type of Bossa Nova that you've heard in elevators or when you're on hold. And you're absolutely right. These covers differentiate themselves from the classics in a number of important ways. This is where things get pretty cheesy. Firstly, you're hearing the noble but ultimately doomed attempt to recreate some pretty subtle nuance, and that is the disconnected and playful melody that Bossa Nova usually has. It's there in the classics, and it's totally absent from the elevator versions. And that's not as abstract as you might think. Late music historian and theorist Irna Piore in her paper Authenticity in Performance Practice touches upon this distinctive quality of the genre as it was displayed by one of Brazil's greatest musical heroes, João Gilberto. She noted that, at certain points in the music, the melodic line floats on top of the accompaniment, often finding synchronized moments during the composition, usually during formal divisions or repetitions. The tempo is stretched out of synchronization between voice and guitar. This misalignment continues until the phrase is over, aligning itself again when a new verse begins. This misalignment produces a metric dissonance, a sense of rhythmic instability that can only be corrected when a new phrase begins. To put it more simply, Bossa Nova's loosey-goosey when it comes to time. And I think that's pretty cool. I mean, that's one of my favorite things about Bossa Nova. It's what gives it its relaxed feel. The meter is just a suggestion, but the final product never feels sloppy or messy. Well, it's, it's great for us, but if you were trying to transcribe these melodies in the early 60s, it would have been a nightmare. Bossa Nova is hard to write down. 
and this is actually where a really big disconnect arises. This can perhaps be best seen in fake books from the era. Uh, fake books are collections of musical lead sheets intended to help musicians quickly learn new songs. Piori explains that the writers of these fake books always chose the anticipation of the eighth note to give the song an offbeat feel. In turn, the transcriptions are equally square. They don't resemble the nuances of Gilberto's style. So these American instrumental and vocal covers that you're hearing in the elevator are a continuation of this squaring off of the bossa nova rhythm. They're using these transcriptions, and sometimes they're just totally ignoring any anticipation whatsoever. And the result is cheesy. It's awkward. The samba rhythm suggests something relaxed, but the music itself is kind of mechanical. It just sounds off. This brings us to our second main difference between the elevator and Rio, and that's the Portuguese language itself. It lends Bossa Nova a lot of its bounce and style. I don't know if you've noticed, but Portuguese is quite a bit sexier than English, especially compared to my nerdy Canadian accent. I think it's fair to say that there's a feeling to the music that doesn't translate perfectly into English. Take for example probably the most famous Bossa Nova hit of all time, a Girl from Ipanema, written by Vinicius de Moraes. Arthur Nostrovsky, a renowned musicologist, critiques this version well, I think. He says if you sing tall and tan and young and lovely, everything is on beat, like a military march. Vinicius's Portuguese lyric Olha que coisa mais linda, mais cheia de graça. scans very differently. It's languid, swinging, irregular. The rhythm is displaced. There's an extraordinary mobility which mimics the movement of the girl passing by. So clearly there's a lot to appreciate when it comes to bossa nova, but that still begs the question, why does it play in elevators? And here's the thing, it doesn't. Or at least not so much anymore. Think about the last time you've heard that cliched elevator music while in an actual elevator, maybe in a hotel, definitely in movies, but in an actual elevator. Now this isn't to say that bossa nova elevators and shopping malls don't go way back. I mean, bossa nova was really gaining international fame in the late 50s and the early 60s, just as American post-war consumerism was really hitting its stride. It makes sense. It was inoffensive. The Brazilian sound is relaxed and easygoing. Its optimism felt good. And this combined with its rising popularity at the time, it made it a natural fit for American consumer spaces like the department store, the mall, or the hotel. But I would argue there's something about Bossa Nova that extends beyond our experience of waiting rooms and hotel lobbies. Something that can bring us back to the intensely personal closeness of the style. Maybe if we can suppress our automatic connection to the elevator and elevator music, we can see something really beautiful. So how do you listen to Bossa Nova? And what exactly are you listening for? There really is some fun stuff you can zoom in on for this genre. If you're listening to a quieter song with minimalist production, like Uvim de Bahia by Joao Gilberto, the hesitating, almost lazy delivery of the vocals always lends to that cool, laid-back feel. And of course, rhythm is a massive part of what makes Bossa Nova what it is. For a lot of bossa nova classics, the rhythm is led by the interplay of acoustic guitar, auxiliary percussion, and vocals, usually in 2-4 time. But you'll also commonly hear shakers, some drums, maybe even a flute or xylophone on some bigger productions. Of course, if you speak Portuguese, you already know how nice bossa nova can be lyrically. But for everyone in the Anglosphere, it's worth looking up the lyrics to a bossa nova song that you like. I think it can really inform your appreciation of the music. I think of it like watching a film in another language. You don't want to listen to the dubbed version, you want that original audio, but subtitles can definitely help a lot. Now before we get to any recommendations, I'd like to just quickly mention why I like bossa nova music and how it fits into my daily listening. I find bossa nova to be the perfect bomb for a stressful day. It's great for relaxing after work, or having a coffee, having dinner with friends. All of these things pair really well with bossa nova. It just has a soothing quality to it to me. I know a lot of music geeks out there don't like the idea of listening to music as 
background noise, but I couldn't disagree with that sentiment more. Now, I totally value a distraction-free listening session. I think that's actually the best way to listen to music, and especially if you haven't heard the music before. But, you know, a bottle of wine, a good conversation, and bossa nova, they just pair too well together for me to pass that up. And finally, here we are with some recommendations. Now, these are guaranteed to make you feel relaxed and maybe even just for a moment, transport you to the sunny beaches of Rio. I think a great place to start is with the names that first developed the genre. If you're looking to just dip your toes in the bossa nova, that's gonna mean Tom Jobim and Joao Gilberto. The first album I'd recommend to you is 1959's Chega de Saudade by Joao Gilberto. This is what many people consider to be the first bossa nova album ever created, although I do disagree with that. It still stands out as one of the best records the genre has ever produced. Some tracks to look out for are the eponymous track Chega de Sadage, Bim Bam, and my favorite Desafinado, which means out of tune, or dissonant in English, by the way. Secondly, on the more instrumental side of Bossa Nova, I would definitely recommend the 1967 record Wave by Antonio Carlos Jobim. Again, the eponymous track is fantastic. It's an iconic melody that you'll definitely recognize from movies and TV. From that album, I'd also check out the ridiculously fun and jazzy closing track, Captain Bacardi. My third entry point would have to be the 1974 album Ellis and Tom by Ellis Regina and Antonio Carlos Jobim. Here you can listen to the aforementioned Aguas de Marzo in what I consider its best form, as well as a beautiful song, and I'm going to butcher this, called Sochinia de Sicumvose, where Ellis Regina's voice really shines. Okay. Onto some deeper cuts. Well, I'll start this off with something that usually isn't considered a deep cut, but I really wanted to highlight a good example of Brazilian-American fusion, especially after coming down on it so hard. This record is, of course, 1964's Getz Gilberto, a collaboration between our old pal Joao Gilberto and American sax legend Stan Getz. This album is incredible from start to finish. It was so popular it actually kicked the Beatles from their number one position on the American charts. Here you'll find my favorite and one of the least cheesy versions of Girl from Ipanema, even though some of the song is in English. Also, it has my favorite version of Corcovado, or Quiet Nights of Quiet Stars. This is an absolute masterpiece of an album, and my personal favorite of all my recommendations today. And because I know jazz fans are probably rolling their eyes at that last one, I'll throw in a real deep cut. And that is the soundtrack to the 1959 film Orfeo Negro, or Black Orpheus in English. I think this might be the first true collection of recorded bossa nova music, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. It definitely beat out Gilberto's first album by a few months. To me, the song that stands out the most is a song called Felicidade, which is very chill and kind of haunting with a very bare bones production. And lastly, if Bossa Nova has really piqued your interest, I'd recommend the book Bossa Nova, The Story of the Brazilian Music That Seduced the World by Rui Castro. It's an absolutely engrossing view of the genre, and Castro's writing is extremely immersive. It really makes you feel like you're there in 1960s Rio. It's a great read, and it really helped inform the making of this video. Well, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and please let me know in the comments if there's a genre of music that you really think deserves a redemption. So I'll just leave you with some nice footage of beaches around where I live and some less than ideal copyright safe bossa nova music.